Happy summer! It's Mundo Monday, ready again to share with you the whole world stories. And summer means extra fun at the library. We're starting some in-person programs back up, outdoor programs at Cecil Park. I'll even be doing an evening story time on Mondays at 7, starting July 12th. Uh, Ms. Barb is working hard to put together the longest Summer Quest program ever. And, and we have some summer reading challenges for you to try on your own. Uh, all on this year's theme of Tales and Tales. Tales and Tales? Uh, tales, as in animal tales, and tales, as in stories. Oh, animal stories. That is another thing people all over the world have in common. Animal tales. Animals can be the heroes or the villains of stories. Animals can even simply act like animals, but still be important to the people in the stories because they are important to people in real life. Whether working animals, food animals, or simply companions, pets. No matter what culture you are from, no matter what your family looks like or how you act, as long as you're kind, chances are you might like a pet, and a pet might like you, as Frederico shows us in this first book. In fact, this book was originally written and published in Spain. That's way over here across the ocean in Europe. But they translated it into English and published it in the United States too because the story's pretty universal. The story of a cat who's adopted many different families. Frederico and all his families by Millie Hernandez. Pictures by Gomez. Frederico is a very special cat. He has white socks and many families. Frederico enjoys having breakfast with Anne, her brother Sam, and their two moms. He loves yogurt. Virginia, Ellie, and Lizzie live with their mom and dad. While they brush their teeth in the morning, Frederico cleans his whiskers. Sarah walks with Frederico and her dad to catch the bus to go to school. Paula is a happy baby who lives with her two dads, Louis and Pablo. When she falls asleep, Frederico gently rocks her crib. Tadeo lives with his grandparents. Frederico loves playing with the balls of wool while Grandma Margaret knits. Nick his mom and their cat Frida read a book every night. Rodrigo listens in as he looks up at the stars. Rodrigo is a very happy cat with all his different families. All those different kinds of families, but all love and are loved by Rodrigo. have a cat like Rodrigo. She just up and decided that we would be one of her families one day, and she always came to visit us. But her official family moved away and took her with them. I miss her. I haven't seen her in a year. Pets miss their people, too. Dogs especially. Dogs get very attached to their people. Dog in this story is trying her hardest to never have to leave her girl again. But there are many places dogs aren't allowed to be unless they prove they can. Hello, Goodbye Dog by Maria Gianferrari. Pictures by Patrice Barton. Hello, Moose, said Zara. There was nothing Moose loved more than hello. Look at those cuddles. Hello was a ride in the car. Uh, goodbye, Moose, said Zara. It's time for school. Moose put on her brakes. It took mom and dad to get Moose to leave. There was nothing Moose disliked more than goodbye. Goodbye was an itch that couldn't be scratched. When mom checked the mailbox, out zoomed Moose. It was time to say hello. There she goes. 
two paws patted on the glass. Oh my, said Mrs. Perkins. It's my dog Moose, said Zara. Hello, Moose, said the class. What would you do if somebody's dog showed up at the window of school? Hello was a pat on the head. Dogs aren't allowed in school, said Mrs. Perkins. Moose will be quiet, said Zara. She loves story time. Moose lay at Zara's feet as Mrs. Perkins read a story. Goodbye, Moose, said Zara. Moose put on the brakes. It took Mom, Dad, Zara, and Mrs. Perkins to get Moose to leave. Goodbye was being tied up in the backyard. Moose chewed through the rope. It was time to say hello! Hello, Moose, cried Zara. Hello is having a book and someone to read it to you. Dogs aren't allowed in the library, said Miss Jen. Also be quiet, said Zara. She likes when they read to her. Zara read. Kids listened. Moose's tail swept circles on the rug. Goodbye, Moose, said Zara. Moose put on her brakes. It took Mom, Dad, Zara, Mrs. Perkins, and Ms. Chen to get Moose to leave. <laughs> She's hiding under the blanket. Goodbye was a closing door. Moose pushed through the screen. It was time to say hello! Hello, Moose, said Zara. Hello smelled like homemade cookies. Dogs aren't allowed in the cafeteria, said one of the lunch ladies. She'll be quiet. I'll just read to her, said Zara. Zara read. One kid sat, then another, and another until the table was full. Moose's tail thumped on the floor. Isn't that fun? Everybody, everybody wants to sit together because they're all reading. Oh, okay, and there's a dog. What's that dog doing here? asked Principal Evans. It's time for goodbye, Moose, said Zara. But Moose was tired of goodbye. A game of tag was on and Principal Evans was it. Chairs tipped, kids slipped, teachers tripped, trays flipped, and Moose skipped right back to Zara. Uh, then Moose got tagged. You're out. That's why she's not allowed there. Goodbye, Moose, said Zara. It took Mom, Dad, Zara, Mrs. Perkins, Ms. Chen, Principal Evans, and all the lunch ladies to get Moose to leave. Goodbye was tag without an it. Goodbye was a tug and no war. Goodbye was hide without seek. Goodbye was being alone. Oh! Yelled Moose. She needed to say hello, but Zara wasn't there. Hello, Moose, said Zara. I know you don't like goodbyes, and I have an idea. Zara took Moose to therapy dog school. Moose was tested on her temperament. Check. That means, is she a happy, a happy dog? Yeah, she's a happy dog. On sitting. On lying down, staying, check. On being with children, check. And being around wheelchairs, double check. She's very used to that. Finally, Moose was ready. Certificate Moose from is a therapy dog school graduate. Yay, Moose. The next day, Moose joined Zara in the classroom. Hello, Moose, said the class. Mrs. Perkins, Ms. Chen, Principal Evans, and all the lunch ladies. Now she's allowed to be there. I have to know what it says in the sign. It says, welcome, class reading dog, Moose. Today was hello. Look. She's reading with the kids at the school. So Moose is a therapy dog. What is the difference between a therapy dog and a service dog? <laughs>
A service dog is trained to perform a specific task to help people, a job. One of the most common examples is a seeing eye dog who helps blind or visually impaired people to find their way around and avoid dangers. Other service dogs have been trained to retrieve things for people, to get things, or even to sense when their person is about to have an attack of whatever their illness is and get that person the help they need. As a wheelchair user, Zara could probably get a service dog who's trained to say, open doors for her or pick things up that she drops and can't reach. But Moose would have to go through much more intensive training to be a service dog. Instead, she's been trained to be calm, comforting, companion, a therapy dog. Only service dogs are allowed in our library most of the time, unless your pet has been trained to do a specific task, a specific job, you have to leave them at home. But in the past, we have had therapy dogs come in for special visits planned ahead of time so that kids could practice reading to them, just like Moose does at the end of this book. We haven't done it in a while, but maybe we will again someday. Oh, that would be sweet. Of course, you have to be careful because some people are allergic to pets. We can't forget their needs either. You know what's great? What? Nobody's allergic to stories about pets. We can tell all those we want without fear. Yes. Join us next week for more Tales and Tales. What was that?